Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I thought I would tell you the truth about vitamin C serums and what the differences are between the vitamin C active ingredients that you can buy in various skincare products. I think there's a lot of confusion out there around vitamin C's and what the differences are because everybody tells you that the kind that is in their product is the best. And so what really makes a vitamin C the best? So if you have been with me for a long time, you know that I love vitamin C. I think it does great things for your skin. It's basically an antioxidant that fights free radicals. Free radicals are destructive molecules that are created in our skin from exposure to everyday things like sunshine, pollution, even stress causes free radicals in our skin. So you can't get away from them. They are with us all day, every day. They damage our collagen they damage our skin's DNA and our elastin, and they make us look older. And so antioxidants can donate an electron to neutralize the free radicals and make them into non-harmful little beasties. So some other things that it can do for your skin is fade dark spots, reduce wrinkles, brighten your complexion overall, and it also is very important in collagen production. So that's why I like vitamin C and I use it. But if you guys have listened to me for any amount of time, you know that there's only one form of vitamin C that I'll use, and that is ascorbic acid, otherwise known as L-ascorbic acid. You can kind of think of it as the pure form of vitamin C because L-ascorbic acid already exists in our skin. We get it from food that we eat and it sends it through your bloodstream into your skin and to other parts of your body where it needs to be. And so your skin has a big reservoir of L-ascorbic acid already present. So as we get older, our skin becomes less effective at keeping that reservoir of L-ascorbic acid filled. So one way that you can supplement the L-ascorbic acid in your skin is to apply it from the outside in. According to research, ascorbic acid is the only form of vitamin C proven to increase L-ascorbic acid levels in our skin. You can't just put any L-ascorbic acid on your skin and have it absorb. It has to be formulated at exactly the right pH in order for it to absorb into your skin, and it also has to have a couple of other helper antioxidants to help it work better. It can be 16 times more effective if you include ferulic acid and vitamin E. These other antioxidants also help to stabilize it while it's in the bottle because, of course, the problem with um, l ascorbic acid-based vitamin C serums is that they do their oxidizing in the bottle, so it's kind of a race against time to use them. They're generally stabilized at the lower pH with the two other helpers in the bottle for about three months, so you can buy a serum put it on your face for three months and it'll be fine. So basically what companies have done is they recognize that there was a problem with formulating with l ascorbic acid because it does turn brown and people don't like that. And so they tried to stabilize it. So what they've done is added either like a fat molecule or something else onto it so that it is stabilized. And so it can sit on the shelf at a pharmacy or at a Target or a drugstore, Walgreens, Walmart, wherever you're gonna buy it, um, in a factory warehouse where you're gonna order it, it can be shelf stable for way longer. But unfortunately, there's a big difference between the stabilized esters and the real pure L-ascorbic acid. So the problem with the esters overall is that they need to be converted inside your skin into L-ascorbic acid in order for them to work. So that, in my mind, is one strike against them because there really isn't any independent scientific research showing that any of that conversion goes on in your skin. I can find lots and lots of independent research on L-ascorbic acid showing that it does penetrate the epidermis, which is the top layers of your skin. It does scavenge free radicals while it's in there, and it does do all these things that we've said, right? Nevertheless, there are a lot of people out on the interwebs talking about lots and lots of different forms of vitamin C, saying that they're the best one ever because they're stable, because they won't irritate, because they penetrate deeper past the epidermis into the dermis. But does that necessarily make them better? I don't think so, because even if they're in the dermis, if they don't convert into L-ascorbic acid, what good are they? They're not gonna do any good, right? Most of skin's collagen is produced in the dermis, so it kind of makes sense that you would wanna get your vitamin C into the dermis to help with that collagen production, but in reality, 
the vast majority of the l ascorbic acid, the vitamin C naturally occurring in our skin, is in the epidermis, the upper layers of the skin, not in the dermis at all. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in the dermis to help with collagen production. So one of the main forms of vitamin C that I get asked about constantly these days is THD, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. It was created by a company called Barnett and they did all the research on it. So they did a lot of different research, but unfortunately most of it was not in actual human skin on people. And that's a big difference between the research that they've done and the research that's been done into l -ascorbic acid. But I did look at the research that the company produced on their THD product and um, I found some of it really interesting. So um, one of their studies showed that THD penetrate the epidermis, which is the top layers of the skin, easily, but that THD only minimally penetrate the dermis, which are the deeper layers of skin. And this is what you always hear about THD, is that it penetrates deeper and that's why it's better. Then another little interesting piece of research that um, came from the company, and I'll link their research paper below if you want to take a look at it, as well as a lot of the um, studies that I found on l ascorbic acid. If you really want to get into the deep science on it, I'll link a couple of papers and things below for you. But anyway, they did some research into um, how long it took each ingredient to become effective at fighting free radicals in the skin. And it was really interesting because THD took 48 hours to become 100% effective at fighting free radicals. And at 24 hours, it was only 50% effective at fighting free radicals. Versus l -ascorbic acid, which is 100% effective within 30 minutes of putting it on your skin. Also, once it's absorbed into your skin, it can't be washed off and it's stabilized once it's in there and it stays in your skin for up to three or four days. And the last thing on the research is that if you're looking up independent studies on THD, there is only one that I could find and it didn't just use THD in the study. It combined it with, guess what? ascorbic acid at 10%. And so of course it found that this combination of ascorbic acid and THD did all these great things for your skin, but you don't know which one was doing it and where there's already a mountain of research showing that ascorbic acid did it. I don't know, you tell me, which one do you think was responsible? Maybe it was a combo, but maybe not, hard to say. Ascorbic acid also does a really cool trick in that it can regenerate already oxidized vitamin E. Vitamin E and ascorbic acid help each other to be more potent together in your skin so that they can do more free radical fighting. All right, so those are my main arguments for l -ascorbic acid and against THD. So some of the products that contain THD that people have asked me about, especially this past week, I don't know, some other YouTubers or some other influencers or somebody somewhere must have done a video mentioning the truth treatments or the Skin Better Alto Serum, because both of these keep showing up in my DMs like crazy. So I'm gonna talk about those two first. I'm gonna give you my assessment of these products. Of course, when I'm looking at other products, I haven't tried them. I'm just looking at the ingredients online and telling you what I think of the ingredients. Now, if you've used this product and you love it, don't think I'm bashing the product. I'm not bashing the, pro the company. I'm definitely a capitalist. I feel like you know everybody has the right to make money out there. Um, but I also don't want to see you guys waste your money on a product that isn't really going to give you all that it says it is. And the thing with skincare is that it's a completely unregulated industry. So people can tell you whatever they want and no one can say a peep about it. Um, they can show you research uh, that isn't really, you know, double blinded, placebo controlled and blah, 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 all that good stuff that you want to see to back up their point which is unfortunate. And so it's sometimes it's really hard to sift through because who wants to sit there and read studies? You know, I mean, I like it, but <laughs> I doubt everyone does. So let me give you the truth about truth treatments. Vitamin C serum first, it is $200 an ounce. I know they suck you in by showing you that it's $49 when you do a search on it, but that's for five mils and five mils is not much. 30 mils is one ounce. And you know what? <laughs> There is no vitamin C serum on this planet that's worth over 50 bucks, let's say. Okay, I'm just saying. Uh, because all the raw ingredients cost the same. I mean, you can buy tetrahexyl decal ascorbate 
on a website like Lotion Crafters for $40 for an ounce and you can mix your own and put it on your face and save yourself a boatload of money. So why you would ever pay $200 for it is beyond me. But if you like to spend $200, like some people think that the more it costs, the better it's gonna be and that's fine. Like I said, not bashing products, just trying to save you guys some money and explain you know, what the differences are. All right, so this does contain THD. Um, on the website, it says that it has the most THD, the highest concentration in any product available, but they don't give you how much is in there. Whereas other sites do tell you how much is in there. And if you're gonna buy it, I would buy it from another site that tells you how much you actually get. It is the first ingredient on the ingredient label and the ingredient list is very small and there's nothing offensive in there either. So, you know, from just an ingredient standpoint, it looks fine to me, except that it's THD and not l ascorbic acid. So for 200 bucks, I don't even think it's gonna do what it promises to do in your skin. Like you don't know how much conversion you're getting out of that. And you really wanna spend 200 bucks on a crapshoot like that? I know I don't. All right, so that's all I have to say about the truth treatments. Next is Skin Better Alto. It's $150 an ounce and it's not really available on the web, but you have to go to like a, you know, you have to find a doctor's office to buy it from. So it's considered medical grade skincare, which hmm, I could do a video on that too. If you want me to do a video on medical grade skincare, give it a thumbs up and then I'll know that you want that. Um, anyway, this does contain THD as well. This has a really long, but not offensive ingredient list, but look at how far down this ingredient list the tetrahexyl decal ascorbate is. That's way far down there. So this can't be in there in more than 10% at the most. I'd say more likely it's five, between one and 5% because of all the other stuff that's in there. But it does include hyaluronic acid, licorice root, green tea, grapeseed extract, a peptide, CoQ10, it has ceramides, it has linoleic acid and linolenic acid, and it has vitamin E. This reminds me a lot of the Paula's Choice Omega Plus um, lotion that I have been using in my skincare the last, uh, I don't know, six months or so that has a lot of these same ingredients, but it doesn't have THD in it because it's not a vitamin C serum. But for me, the THD is kind of a waste anyway. So I would get the Paula's Choice Omega thing instead for, I believe that's $39 an ounce versus $150 an ounce for this one. A couple of other THD containing serums that people have asked me about recently. One is the Biosance Squalane Plus Vitamin C Rose Oil. This one costs $72 an ounce. Again, there's nothing offensive about it in the ingredient list except the price and the form of vitamin C is THD, which again, don't think it's gonna do anything for you. The Beauty Counter All Bright C Serum for $79 an ounce contains THD plus bisglycerol ascorbate, which is another vitamin C ester combined. They give you 10%, so let's say probably 5% of each, but probably not because they do put the bisglycerol ascorbate first. And since that's not your star ingredient, if there was more of your star ingredient, you would put that first, right? So I'm guessing it's probably like 7%, 3%, maybe something like that. So anyway, very low on the percentage in that one is what I'm guessing, but I don't know for sure. Um, but this one has a ton of problematic ingredients. It's got bergamot, it's got three kinds of orange peel oil, it's got linalool, limonene, citrate, all these things trying to prove that it's like a citrus, a vitamin C kind of thing, things that make it orange, but are not good for your skin. So I would stay away from that one for 79 bucks. This one can be more of a problem than it can be good for your skin. Then another one that I got asked about recently was the Kylie Skin Vitamin C Serum. It's $28 for 0.7 ounces. So, you know, buy it for an ounce for ounce is probably more like $35 an ounce, still a reasonable price point. Um, this does contain THD and it also has a very small and also very impressive ingredient list. I gotta say, I was kind of shocked at this one that it was the Kylie Skin one that was, was cheaper and better than like the $200 truth treatment in my opinion. It contains hyaluronic acid, vitamin E and ferulic acid, which are both those helper antioxidants. It also contains panthenol and green tea. So the vitamin C serums that I do recommend all contain 
L-ascorbic acid at either 15 or 20% concentration. They're all at a pH of around 3.5, 3.0, 3.2, something like that. That is critical for getting them to penetrate into your skin. They all contain those two helper antioxidants, the vitamin E and the ferulic acid, and they don't contain any fragrance. They don't contain any SD alcohol. They're all really good for your skin and really awesome. I'm going to show them to you really quickly here. The Timeless 20% vitamin C plus E plus ferulic acid serum is my all-time favorite. I love it that it comes in this airless pump bottle. It's only $24.95. I have a $5 off discount code with Timeless. It's HF5OFF. Get $5 off your order. That brings it down to $20 bucks for the best form of l acid and it will stay stable. I used a bottle of this. It was stable because of the pump for five months and that's how long it took me to use it and it was clear the whole time. So I love Love that one. Another one that I really love is May Love's The Glow Maker. This is 15% L-ascorbic acid, also formulated at the low pH with the helper antioxidants. This one is also around a $24.95 price point, I do believe, for an ounce, so great price point for that. And then the third one is the Dr. Brenner C Serum. This is 20% L-ascorbic acid, also contains ferulic acid and vitamin E. This one is probably the closest formulation-wise to the expensive SkinCeutical CE Ferulic that retails for $168 an ounce. Um, you know, I don't use that one just because it's too expensive. When you can get things for $24, bucks, why spend $168? I can save that money and get, you know, a laser treatment or something with it or buy some nice pair of earrings or something. Now, if you really were dying to try a THD, you know, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, if this hasn't convinced you that it's not worth your time or your money, then definitely I think you should give it a try and see if your skin likes it. I wouldn't spend $200 or $150 or $79 on a product. So I looked at some ingredients list of other products that I can recommend to you. And so I already mentioned one, which was the Kylie Skin Vitamin C. Then the Or Ordinary, of course, makes a THD product. Theirs is called the Ordinary Ascorbyl Tetra Isopalmitate. It's $17.80 for one ounce. It's got 20% THD. Paula's Choice makes two antioxidant um, serums, both of which look really good. There is the Ultra Light Super Antioxidant Concentrate. That's $39 for an ounce. Or there's also the Resist Super Antioxidant Concentrate. $39 an ounce, and that one also contains 14 other antioxidants. So if you're looking for something with THD plus a mess of other antioxidants in there, you can try one of the Paula's Choice products. If you're looking for just straight THD, I would try the Ordinary product, or if you're looking for something that's more like one of the l acid products but with THD, then I would go with the Kylie product, which is reasonably priced, I think, at like $28, right? For 0.7 ounces. So she is scrimping you a little bit there on the size of the package, you know? I mean, an ounce is standard. Can you please just give us an ounce? But no, she's not going to. Oh my God, I feel so cheeky in this one. <laughs> But I gotta say, I've just been getting so many questions and comments about this THD lately that it's hard to write this all in a DM on Instagram. So it's hard to make people understand the nuances of it. So I hope this didn't go too far into the weeds. I hope you understood what I was saying about the differences between them and why, for me, it really is like a night and day difference between something like l acid and any of the esters. THD is included, whether it's MAP, THD, Pal, so, you know, I mean, there's there's hundreds of them. If you want to learn more about all the different forms of uh, vitamin C, I did do a dedicated video just on choosing the best form, and I'll link that right up here, as well as my ingredient series video all about antioxidants. If you're interested in learning more about antioxidants and which ones are the best ones to choose in your skincare, I'll link that one up here for you too. So that's it for today's video, everybody. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want more truth about skincare and skincare ingredients and what they can do for you, then definitely hit that notification bell and you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.